So we're looking at uh, section 4.4, questions uh, from the homework 7a. I just wanted to uh, highlight something that could be a little bit easier than what we looked at on Friday, and that is to uh, to think about what it what the degree measurement is. The question is in radians, so we have to finish off with radians. We have to work the question in radians, but there's nothing saying that we can't uh, look at it in degrees first. Uh, for instance, this one would be the sine of 285 degrees because pi is 180. So you have 19 times 180 divided by 4, which is 285 degrees. Because the degree measurement ends in 5, there has to be a 45 degree angle in it, right? So how many 45 degree angles can you make up in 285 degrees? Well, you could make five of them. So if I take five 45 degree angles, which is 225 degrees, then I need another 60 degrees to get 285. So in radian measure, because I know what 45 degrees is, it's pi over four. I have five pi over fours, plus I have 60 degrees, which I know is pi over three. So already then we've changed the question originally from the sine of 19 pi over 4 to the sine of 5 pi over 4 plus pi over 3. And then we can expand it using our compound angle formula for the addition of sine. Now the other thing that I could have done here was, I'll just erase this, I could have taken the 285 and said, okay, yes, there's Maybe there's seven 45 degree angles. Okay, so seven 45 degree angles, which means I'm at uh, 315. And 315 minus 30 is also 285. So if I have seven 45 degree angles, I have seven pi over fours. And I know 30 degrees from my special triangles is pi over six. So I could have used 7 pi minus 4, or 7 pi over 4 minus pi over 6 as well as my original question. So there's two different ways I could tackle this problem um, using the addition formula for sine or using the subtraction formula for sine. Now looking at question 8, make sure you read the question before, you know, you see what I have written down. Sine of x equals 3 over 5, cos y equals that. And first quadrant, well, it tells us that the angles x and y are in the first quadrant. So that's the important part. So in the first quadrant, we're in the all quadrant where everything is positive, and you can see sine x is positive three fifths, cos y is positive five thirteenths. Well, our angle x in standard position would be this one. It's giving us the sine ratio. The sine ratio is saying that opposite angle x is three. And the hypotenuse of this triangle is 5. And because we're trying to find an exact value for cos x, that's what question A is asking us, then we're going to need the uh, base of this triangle. Well, using Pythagorean theorem, we know that the base of this triangle, is side A or side B, whatever, is 4. Okay, This is called a Pythagorean triple. We talked about it in class 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. It's one that gets used a lot. Anyway, so I knew that ahead of time. I didn't have to use Pythagorean theorem, but anyway, that's how you would find it. Therefore, we know what the cosine of angle X is. It would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is four-fifths. Okay, and you could do the exact same for question B when you're trying to find the sine of Y. We know the cos ratio is five over 13 which means we know the adjacent and the hypotenuse sides of the triangle. We need to find the opposite side. That is also a Pythagorean triple that we talked about in class. But anyway, you could use Pythagorean theorem to find that third side and have your answer for B. Once you have both of those answers, you could then jump into question 9, which asks you to um, use the addition formula for sine. And, well, there's four different questions there that you could practice with, um, and you're just substituting in the ratios. So when you're looking at 
the sine of x plus y, and you've memorized these formulas, there's just a pattern to the formulas, right? Sine x cos y plus sine y cos x. The sine addition formula keeps the plus sign inside the formula, and it just follows the pattern sine cos plus sine cos, right? So from above, I know what the sine of x is. It's 3 over 5. I know what the cosine of y is. It was given in the question as 5 over 13. Sine of y, you're asked to do in question 8b. And the cos of x, we did in 8a as 4 fifths. And then you're just multiplying fractions and adding them together. Uh, remember, when you're adding fractions, get a, get a common denominator. Question 15 is very similar to questions 8 and 9. They throw this extra little um, special formula in there, the cosine of 2 theta. Well, the cosine of 2 theta, you would have to figure it out as basically the cosine of theta plus theta. So using your addition formula for cosine, you're adding two identical angles together. So you're going to get cos theta times cos theta minus sine theta times sine theta. Right? All I'm doing is I'm following the same pattern as the cosine, the, the cosine of, say, x plus y is cos x cos y minus sine x sine y. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just following that pattern of the formula. So that now I, I've, I can simplify cos theta times cos theta is cos squared theta. Sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta. And now I've really, I've developed a formula for cosine of 2 theta. They call that in um, upper trigonometry uh, a double angle formula. I think you use that in calculus. So this is a double angle formula. Uh, you, actually, you can see the double angle formulas. There's two more of them in 14a and b. You can derive those formulas from this exact one because we know the uh, law that was a Pythagorean law. Sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. And from this, we can manipulate the formula. Sine squared x actually is the same as 1 minus cos squared x. Because all we've done is bring the cos squared x to the other side. And now we've developed another formula. Well, we can apply what we just did right in this uh, formula as well, just to change its appearance a little bit. So change sine squared into 1 minus cos squared theta. Do a little bit of math here. This negative goes inside the bracket, so you actually have a plus cos squared. So you get cos squared theta plus cos squared theta, which is 2 cos squared theta, and you still have that minus 1, which is the formula in 14b that it's, that it's showing you. Uh, in any case, um, we don't want the one with cos squared theta in it because it doesn't have the same uh, ratio as question 15 is asking us. It's giving us sine theta equals 7 over 25. Okay, So if we know sine theta, I'm just going to erase this because I went a little above and beyond, but I'm trying to explain question 14 at the same time. Oops, I erased too much. This is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. Well, if we use a knowledge from uh, question 8 and 9, uh, if, if we're given sine theta is 7 over 25, then we know what cosine theta is, right? Um, it, this is in the second quadrant, so sine is positive in the second quadrant. Cosine would be negative, but you can find your ratio the exact same way as you did in question 8a. Uh, so in this one, just remember on this line here, where we're going to put in cos squared theta. Well, we don't know what cos squared is until we figure it out. 
but we do, do know what sine theta is. Sine theta is 7 over 25. And we're squaring that because it's sine squared. So it's just another way to ask question 8 and 9 only in this context.